Hi, welcome to Wellbeing Live, produced by the Mental Health Center of Denver. My name is Vanessa Valdez and I'm a certified peer specialist working in adult rehabilitation services at the Mental Health Center of Denver. <clears throat> the reason why I love my job is because I'm able to share my live life experiences with others and help give some wellness tools and help people find meaningful activities in their daily life so that they can have a wonderful journey to well-being as well. Um, today for our topic, we are going to be talking about wellness tools and I'm going to give you some ideas on how to set a wellness plan for yourself, especially during times like now, during um, different kinds of change and situations. Um, I encourage you to look in the right hand corner of your screen and we're going to have some questions that you can submit and at the end of our talk, I'll be able to answer some of those questions. Um, so first is, is wellness. What is wellness? Wellness is a self-defined definition that you can provide for yourself. It's different for everybody. So we'll kind of explore that today during the talk. Also, I'm going to encourage you to think about what you feel like when you are well. What is it like? How does it feel? Um, what are you like? Um, and we're going to explore that a little bit more during our talk as well. So um, as far as the Mental Health Center of Denver, the program that I work in is education and vocational services. So people come to our building to be able to find meaningful activities. <clears throat> and this is why I promote wellness. <clears throat> so this is why I promote wellness in that program. We help people find education services, we help people find employment, and also sometimes just social activities, things that just help you feel better about yourself, being around people. The foundation to having a wellness plan is to build a wellness toolbox. So we'll go ahead and talk about a wellness toolbox during the situation, um, the situation of crisis. So a wellness toolbox is kind of like a regular toolbox where you have a screwdriver, you have a hammer, you have a wrench, things that are on hand so that if you need to fix something, they're there for you. So a wellness toolbox are things that make you feel good. They make you happy. In my wellness toolbox, before this pandemic, I would say going to the rec center, utilizing the steam room and the hot tub. Um, even after a long day, I wouldn't have to necessarily work out, but just relax. And that was one of my biggest, biggest wellness tools. Exercise is a huge one. So now there's a lot of websites. There's um, free YouTube videos. There's Instagram. We have Zoom, where you can do Zumba, which is my personal favorite. And um, that is something that you can utilize just from home. But going for walks is a great wellness tool to put in that toolbox. Um, yoga, that's another great tool that people really, really love. I do classes and every person in the class, at least once a week, tells me how yoga has changed their life. Um, so yoga is a great way and meditating, meditation, even if it's five minutes, it's really helpful to just be present in the situation that you're in, um, just to kind of take yourself outside of the outside world and put yourself inside your own being. So making space for yourself to have that quiet time. Another one is organizing decluttering. So that's another thing that I've been doing a lot of lately is going through papers, things that are kind of weighing me down, things that I've been avoiding for a while. Um, going through my mail, shredding things. Also making files and being able to put things in priority so that way you can take things one by one. Even if it's just a pile a day or um, a good handful a day. By the end of the week, you're going to get through a lot. 
Another one's crafting. So crafting is a big creativity activity that once again, you can find some YouTube videos. Um, somebody told me that they're doing five minute crafting and making their own masks out of socks or um, learning how to do their own nail art. So crafting is a great way to express yourself when you're not able to do other things like go out and about. <clears throat> also, another one is, um, let's see, I was thinking of fishing. A lot of people like to go fishing or even just sit by a stream or a lake. Now there's a lot of places that are opening up a little bit, but it's a good way to kind of connect with your environment, which goes along with gardening and doing yard work. So that's a great exercise to be able to connect with your earth if you're a little spiritual. It's a great way to kind of get your hands into the, the atmosphere. Another wellness tool that I would talk about is here, um, definitely journaling. Journaling is a great one because you can get your thoughts on paper. I encourage people when they're thinking about learning how to let go of certain situations that they're able to write it down because at some point in time you can put it away. You can even do something like shred it and put it in a little area or you know if you have the space and you're doing it safely you could even maybe burn it so that way you can get rid of those thoughts and feel a little bit better about letting those those feelings go so wellness toolbox that we can build is is totally up to you that's that's something that is, is nobody can tell you what's right or wrong and that's why i wanted to go through some of the stuff that you can do on your own and you have control over. I'm not gonna tell you, let's go to the movies because that's not possible right now, or um, go to the gym and, and release that energy. But those are great ways to release positive, or release negative energy. Another one that I would really encourage you to do is watch a funny movie. Maybe you have a, a favorite actor or something like that, that you just, every time you turn them on, they make you laugh. A, a good TV show. Um, me, myself, I like to watch things that are totally not in reality, so it can kind of take me out of my daily life and um, be able to think about things that are probably not going to happen, but um, it's kind of a good way to just check out of, out of my own thoughts. So as you can see, we're building that wellness toolbox, and if you have anything to add, um, you can and maybe put it into the suggestion or the question box and, and we can go over a little bit more at the end. Um, so that brings me to a daily maintenance plan. And so the wellness toolbox is a foundation of your daily maintenance plan. Your daily maintenance plan, once again, is your self-defined plan. So it's what makes you feel good. It's the things that you do every day that keep you going. So I'll give you some ideas. First things first is thinking about what you do the first thing that you do when you wake up. And this is different for everybody. So that's why I want to encourage you to think about what is the first thing that you do? What's the first thing that gets you up? And I know that it's been hard during this time to keep a schedule. So um, for me, I have to get in the shower and that's the one thing that wakes me up. And if I skip that, I know that something's probably gonna go a little different in my day. So explore that in your mind. Um, it could possibly be brushing your teeth. It could be, you know, it could be drinking coffee, having a cigarette, whatever that looks like to you but keep that in mind and even write these things down. So the next thing I would say is medication. A lot of people take medications and vitamins and that's a daily ritual. So making sure that you have time in your day and um, that you've scheduled that in there because you're gonna think about it. If you skip your medicine, something's probably not going well. 
And one thing I definitely encourage you to think about as well is these are the th things that are signs of when things are breaking down. So that's another part of a wellness recovery and action plan is knowing these things about yourself, knowing that if you're skipping your taking your dog out or um, you have children and there's just something different about your morning that you're able to be self-aware. So that's a big thing about this wellness plan is being self-aware. And a lot of these things that I'm gonna tell you are things that you've already known, you've already learned. And that's a big part of your support as well as I'm not here to tell you that anything you're doing is right or wrong. We've been taught a lot of these skills and tools before, but what it is is that I'm helping you practice these things. I'm helping you bring this back to the front of your mind. And um, it's okay. It's okay to sometimes have different feelings about these, these tools and these different kinds of plans. But the biggest thing is that you can bring yourself back to what you really need. So um, the daily maintenance plan will kind of move on a little bit. Structuring your day. A lot of us are not working or working from home or doing some homeschooling with our children. So structuring that, making sure that you're still eating at certain times, um, planning some meals, maybe um, thinking about your caffeine intake. These are all things that are gonna affect you during your day. So planning out the middle part of your day. And then that also brings us to sleep. And once again, I know myself, I can relate that sleeping has been a little bit hard. I have to think about what's my routine, kind of taking an inventory of what I'm doing, what my day looks like, how I'm spending my time. Because when it comes to nighttime, I really need to recharge. I have to be able to sleep in order to come to the next day and be able to be productive. So I'll give you a few tools on sleeping, turning off electronics, and it's okay to be able to check out from electronics. Um, it's okay to be able to take an hour break, say I'm not gonna answer that phone call right now. Um, put some boundaries on some stuff in your, your life. Um, one boundary I have is I don't talk about work when I'm not working. and. So that keeps me, that keeps my life separated from work and pleasure and being able to stay well, because if it ran over into my daily life, I wouldn't be able to be the person that I am during the day. Another good one is, I mentioned it before, but caffeine. So that's a little bit harder to do, but thinking about if I want to sleep tonight, I might not drink that last cup of coffee at four o'clock, or I might not have that Mountain Dew at dinner. Um, just kind of keeping an inventory of that as well. Um, so yeah, that's a lot about the daily maintenance plan. And um, I'm kind of just going through this because this is part of something bigger called Wellness Recovery and Action Planning. This is another workshop that I will be doing in the future, and you can also find one in your community. So this is where you can actually go into your wellness planning in detail. You can have a whole plan of crisis situation, which I would really encourage a lot of people to do because I've had to go back to my wellness recovery and action plan during the last couple months just to be able to say, okay, Vanessa, there's things happening. How can you get back to your plan? Um, are things breaking down? It's just a really good way to be self-aware and to be able to say to yourself, I can do this. Things may not be the best right now. Change is hard, but we can get through this. And I do want to tell you, we're going to get through this together. This is the reason why we have these kinds of well-being live workshops is because there's a lot of support out there. There's different resources. I myself Google a lot, so um, can't always take all the information in, but there are a lot of great resources, a lot of people out there willing to support. 
And um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about Mental Health Center of Denver website. So if you go to the Mental Health Center of Denver website, mhcd.org, we do have treatment resources. We have peer support resources and a little bit more about what a peer supporter is. Um, also, there's different roles of peer support. So I encourage you to check into that because it's amazing. Um, adult rehabilitation, family, child care, and a lot of it too. This is the reason why I got into working um, in the mental health field is for teenagers, because I really do believe that that's where a lot of this starts is, um, you know, being able to become better adults. So once again, we've been taught these skills before. Maybe it's through culture, maybe it's through education, but um, it's it's really good to be able to revisit these things on a, on a basis, on a more frequent basis. So um, I definitely want to get to some questions and um, maybe some answers. So um, Hey, Vanessa, thank you for that talk. It was, uh, it was great to hear from you and your expertise around how we can build our own well-being toolbox. We do have a few questions and just a reminder to everyone uh, joining us today to submit your questions via the Q&A uh, box in the upper right hand corner of your screen. The first question is, uh, do you have any resources for craft tutorials? The one biggest resource I have is YouTube. Um, I learned a lot on YouTube and that's where I typed in five minute crafting. Also, if you are a part of Mental Health Center of Denver and you receive services there, at 260, we have a great art department with um, Kristen, our art educator, and different times of the year, different activities that they do crafting, they do painting, um, and yeah, I would encourage you if you are a part of Mental Health Center of Denver to look into To Succeed. But YouTube is a great resource. Thank you. Uh, next question is, I have trouble sticking to a daily routine. Do you have any suggestions for that? Yes. Um, so writing things down, that's a great way. I know it's kind of old school, but um, I, I really am a big fan of writing everything down. Also, you can use technology like an app on your phone. I know that there's some different um, apps that you can type in for scheduling. Even if you sometimes like myself, I tend to avoid my calendar just because there's a lot going on, but it's prioritizing. It really is. And they even have dry erase boards that you can get like at the Dollar Tree and I have one on my refrigerator and I make notes all the time. So that would kind of be my suggestion to that. Great, uh, next question. Uh, and this is something that I'm wondering about too. Do you have any tips for falling asleep at night? I feel like my mind is racing every night and it's hard to shut my brain off. That is a great question. Um, I'm kind of right there with you a little bit on that, but in the past, some really great tips was writing things down again, kind of before you go to sleep, journaling. So that way you can say to yourself, I give myself permission to let the day go, kind of a reflection. So writing the things down that you've done good for the day. And a lot of it, it's about control. So what are the things that you can control? And what are the things you can't control? So there's a lot of things that you're not going to be able to fix that you don't have solutions to. But by recognizing them, you'll be able to take things one on one. And it's almost like tricking your mind into putting it away, maybe putting that journal and that thought into a drawer or in another room. So then that way you can be able to say, OK, I'm complete with the day. All I can do is sleep. I'll revisit it tomorrow. Okay, next question. 
How are you keeping your well-being good during coronavirus? I feel anxious all the time and it's hard to focus. Well, I'm right there with you. I admit to having anxiety and um, it's definitely a battle that I, I struggle with every day. But I do have my plan. So I'm a creature of, ha of habit, um, making sure that I wake up at the same time that I kind of have a plan for the day. And it's okay to only have 50% planned because really, once again, you can't control everything. So just giving yourself that freedom and awareness to be able to say, here's my 50% plan for the day. And you know, if things don't go okay, it's okay. I have to be able to process it and let it go. Um, yesterday, I did a support group on letting things go and a lot of it was yes i have that thought i have to um i have to think about it i have to process it and then i have to let it go i have to dissolve it otherwise it's going to continue staying on me like that heavy coat all day long another good thing too is exercise it's a healthy way of releasing negative energy it has a lot of positive brain effects and um, you'll be surprised how good you feel. And a lot of times during that time, those thoughts kind of go away too. Great, next question. Uh, what's your favorite way to do self-care? My therapist told me to practice it and I like to do my gratitude journal. That's a good one. I smile because um, that is one thing that is one of my passions is self-care. I also double as a cosmetologist um, and Zumba instructor. So my favorite way is to dance and um, listen to music. Also, as a cosmetologist, I would say, get yourself a new hairdo or, um, you know, soak your feet sometime, depending on your male or female. It's, it's either way, but get your nails done. Do something good for yourself. Sometimes it feels good to even treat yourself to something new or um, for me, I like to get a new lipstick because if I look good or I feel like I look good, then I, I feel like I can take on the day. So that's my best advice for self-care. Next question is, what do you do when things don't go the way you want them to? That's a good one. Um, a lot of times I have to really just be fair to myself and be able to say it's okay. Um, I can't be everything to everybody. And that's, that's just being fair to yourself and being able to take your own feelings into consideration and also putting boundaries that, um, you know, there's other people that might have that strength and um, that may not be my top five strengths, but um, I can do what I can. And I always tell people in a lot of my peer support groups that it's for as much as you think you can't do, you can do so much. I think that's a great message, uh, Vanessa, for everything that you think you can't do, you can really do a whole lot more. Looks like those are the questions that we have. So unless there are any others that come in, I'll just say thank you for speaking with us today and for sharing um, your expertise with us around our well-being toolbox. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone uh, for tuning in today for our second well-being live event. We have another one tomorrow and then one every Wednesday for the next several weeks. So uh, please check our website, mhcd.org slash uh, well-being live and we look forward to having you join us again soon thank you for coming